Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode here on the MI Gardener channel. I'm so excited to be filming this episode, which is a continuation on our ongoing series on how to grow in containers. If you've not che yet checked out our other videos, I would recommend doing it. But this episode is going to be on cabbage. A lot of times people want to try growing cabbage, but they worry that they, that they don't have what they need to grow it. So we're going to go through this uh, kind of the requirements in the potting, the pot size, the potting mix that we use, the fertilizer, sunlight, and watering. And it's really all you need to know to grow, uh, to grow some really nice cabbage. Now, what I will say is that you're not going to get as large of a cabbage as you would in the ground. It's just some, it's a reality. And it's not something that I would really recommend putting into a pot, but I realize sometimes that's the only option that people have. So if it's the only option you have, go for it. But if you can put it in the ground and you can grow some other stuff in containers, I would recommend that. We have a lot of other videos on what to put in containers. This is one that, again, I'm, I'm simply filming this for the people that have asked for it because we've gotten requests and requests and requests on how to grow cabbage um, in containers. and. It's just because they don't have any other options. So you might be handicapped. You might um, you might only have a patio, and you might not have a garden. Um, so for whatever reason, it's going to be possible. But just do not expect large heads of cabbage. First off, just do not expect it. But I definitely I grow at least one every year, and they do fine. They just uh, you can expect something maybe the size of a softball or a little bit larger. And a cabbage is cabbage. It tastes great in coleslaw and it tastes great when it's stir fried and it even tastes great in a salad or juiced. So uh, we grow it for those reasons and I think it's a fun one to grow at least as well um, because people, it's something that really, really a lot of people shy away from. So if you had neighbors that come over that are into gardening, this is that a cabbage? Why, yes it is, that's a cabbage. So uh, let's get into it now. <laughs> I'm having fun today. So uh, let's go talk about the soil that we use and the pot size that we use and then really uh, the rest is pretty essential. It's pretty basic, um, but it is essential. So we're going to talk about it. That's going to be sunlight, fertilizing, and watering. So let's go talk about that now. All right. So when it comes to the pot size, you want to use a larger pot. The cabbage have a very aggressive root system and they need a lot of soil with organic matter as well as fertilizer, which we'll talk about, to grow to even a remotely large enough size to put out a head. So what we want to do is we want to start with a pot that's going to be at least three gallons. These are four and a half gallon. They're called five gallon pots, but they're really four and a half gallons. And that's going to be the size that I use, but you can go with a three gallon pot and be just fine. Again, they'll just be even a little bit smaller. So if, I, if you want anything around the size of a softball size head cabbage, um, go with like a four and a half gallon pot. They can get bigger too. I've seen lots of people get larger head cabbages, but I think it's based on sheer luck. I've never gotten one that's, that's any bigger than, than about that big. So still great size cabbage though. The type of soil that we're using is what we use for everything. It is a potting specific soil and it's going to be one that is well draining. It's going to be one that is uh, loose and uh, and it's going to hold on to water, but not hold on to too much water. And uh, running a little low on my soil here. Um, and we're going to uh, we're going to want to have a a potting specific soil because of the fact that um, cabbage is is in the brassica family, and brassicas are prone to something called club root. And club root basically is where your roots they get a a that's a disease that makes the roots all gnarly and it just really is is um, detrimental to the plant health your plant will begin to look a little stunted and the roots will begin to turn really bulbous and and just kind of sick looking um and so uh that's really all there is to to the soil it's something that i stress all the time because i think a lot of people they just go with any old soil and any old soil is not going to cut it when it comes to uh, when it comes to growing cabbage um, because or any any vegetables for that matter just because regular soil regular topsoil will compact and especially during the heat of the summer it's going to compact and do what's called caking and it's going to cake where the water will literally just run right off the side and go down the edges of the pots and it won't ever get to the plant roots and that's one of the biggest problems with why plants wilt and die. And so um, by having a good loose potting mix that just falls apart and crumbles, it's going to be uh, the best thing for your plants. Now I did run out of potting mix, but this is plenty of soil here. This is again, probably about 
probably about three and a half gallons of soil. So we're right in that fine range. Um, preferably I'll have a little bit more. So I'm gonna come back in once I get some more potting mix. I ran out. Um, so I'm gonna come back in. I'm gonna top dress a little bit of with a little bit of the, the potting mix. But what you wanna do is you wanna plant one plant. I know a lot of times I like to stress high intensity, but to be honest, this is about as high intensity as you can get with, with a container garden and, and growing cabbage. So one plant is all you can really plant in a size like this. That's why I said it's a little more of a novelty or based out of sheer necessity that one would grow cabbage because it just takes up a lot of space for what you actually get out of it. Now you can harvest the leaves before the head forms. Leaf, uh, basically cabbage leaves can be juiced, thrown into smoothies, sauteed, just like any other green. They're very delicious, but they can be a little bit tougher. That's why most people don't eat them. And they can be a little bit woody and a tiny bit bitter. Um, but we eat them, they're delicious. And so you can get something out of them uh, other than the head of cabbage, but it's just, you know, for the space that it takes up, uh, it's sometimes not, it's not really as, uh, as effective as, as growing something else. So now let's talk about fertilizer requirements. Cabbage is a very heavy feeder, and specifically in the nitrogen category. They use a lot of other nutrients like your phosphorus, potassium, micronutrients, stuff like that. However, nitrogen is so important because you're really growing it for its leaves. It is a leaf crop. <laughs> so you can, you can put phosphorus into your heart's content, you can, put, you can put potassium into your heart's content, but if you do not have nitrogen, the plant will not grow well and it will not produce a head. I can guarantee you that. So what we use is we use Trifecta Plus, we use on all of our plants, but you can make your own DIY version of, of uh, fertilizer that's gonna have all the essentials in it. And um, basically Trifecta Plus is just an all-purpose fertilizer that has uh, the micronutrients, it has beneficial uh, microbes and fungi that's not found in, in potting soils or most traditional soil. Um, and it's also gonna have the trace minerals, which is not found in the potting soil and not found in most traditional soils. And that really helps out plant health, especially in a container where conditions are far from ideal. And so uh, then it also has the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. But if you wanna make a DIY version yourself, go with uh, just one part blood meal, one part bone meal, one part green sand, and then actually take some, uh, some banana peels, put them in the oven at 355 degrees for about 30, 45 minutes till they become crispy. Throw them in a food, uh, food processor, blend them up into a fine powder, mix them up with about a couple cups of crushed eggshells um, and throw that in there. And that's gonna give you all the fertilizer that you're really going to need to sustain the plant for the life of it. Um, it does not need a whole lot more than that because the, the fertilizer that you put in there will stay with the plant. What you can do and what I do to ensure that the plant stays healthy is I come back in about a month and fertilize again because that way the plant stays healthy and any nutrient deficiencies that may be there are going to be are going to be replenished and so since there's not all those conditions that are outside um, found in you know raised bed gardens or traditional gardens you have to make sure that you keep up and they're kind of like babies you just got to make sure you feed them and keep them well watered which we'll talk about in a second and, uh, and they're going to be fine now let's talk about watering Watering requirements, like we just said, they're like babies. You just gotta, they have needs, and if you don't keep up with their needs, they're gonna die. Um, and so, when it comes to watering, you just wanna make sure that you water them about every three days. Um, they don't need that much water because of the fact they have really large succulent leaves, they are very drought tolerant, but you don't wanna let them dry out because if they dry out, they're going to actually go through a shock period. Brassicas, specifically like broccoli, cauliflower, and, uh, and your cabbages and stuff like that, if they dry out and then get a lot of water, that stress will oftentimes make them flower. And if you've ever seen a cabbage flower, it's not a pretty sight. It's something you don't wanna see. So um, by keeping them well watered with a nice even moisture throughout the entire growing season, it's gonna keep them from bolting and uh, from going to seed. Now, uh, the very last thing I wanna talk about is sunlight. When, when, they, when it comes to sunlight, a nice, strong, full sun that is no less than six hours is required to grow uh, cabbage because of the fact that cabbage, they are all leaves and plants use the energy formed in leaves to grow the plant. And it's through photosynthesis that the plant grows. So the more sunlight that they can get, the better. I give my cabbage no less than seven hours of sun 
But if you can give them uh, more, like I said, they'd be great. But uh, any less, and they're going to get really lanky, and they're not going to produce a head for you. So that's, I think, one of the biggest problems is people say, my cabbage is growing, but it's not really producing a head. And you ask them how much sun they're getting it, they're giving it, and it's like three and a half, four hours of sun, and it's a no-brainer why why it's not doing that well. So that's really all there is to growing cabbage. It's a very easy plant to grow if you give it the basics. And uh, the basics are pretty much like most plants, to be honest. So uh, it's not something you don't need to overcomplicate. But hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you do at least try cabbage at least once. If you got the pot and you got the extra soil and you got the space, give it a shot. Why not, right? So I hope you all enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. Let me know if you've tried cabbage in containers and how it did for you in the comments box below. And I will talk to you all later. This is Luke from the MI Gardener channel, hoping you all are growing big or going home. And I'll catch you later. See ya. Bye.